Hi, everyone. My name is David Chestnut, and I work on the Office Platform team. And today I'm going to talk about the upcoming deprecation of Exchange User Identity Tokens and what that means for you. <clears throat> So basically what's happening is exchange user identity tokens and callback tokens are going away. And so I wanted to talk about what's affected and why and when this is happening. Basically, if you're an exchange developer or Alloc developer and you have Alloc add-ins that are using exchange web services or Alloc REST APIs and using identity tokens or callback tokens to work with those, then you're gonna be affected. This is a breaking change. Uh, I would also ask if you're not an exchange developer, but you know someone who is, or maybe in your org, you know that you do have an Outlook add-in, you know, reach out to those folks and share this information. We want to be sure we get everybody to know uh, about this so that we don't have any surprises come October. Um, why are we doing this? So Microsoft has a commitment to keeping customer data safe in a changing threat landscape. And there's a link here to the Secure Future Initiative with more information about that. Basically, emails have uh, you know, sensitive data for corporations and people, and we want to keep that data safe. And unfortunately, exchange tokens are not really capable of continuing to be maintained and brought forward in a modern way that, uh, that we can keep that going. So the decision was made to move to Microsoft Venture ID, which is formally known as Azure Active Directory Services. Uh, this is the best service to work with um, in terms of identity and access management. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a sec. Uh, when this is happening is October of this year. So that's barely four months from now. Um, so this is why we really want to make sure there's no surprises. What's going to happen in October is Exchange Online will block the legacy Exchange user identity tokens and callback tokens by default in all the tenants. So if you make an API call to try to get a token, you're going to get an error and your add-in will break. Now, if you're on Exchange 2019 or other on-premises versions of Exchange, those will continue to work. Those are not affected by this. It's just the Exchange online tenants that are going to be affected. So if you can't use those, what are you supposed to use? Uh, our friends in Microsoft Identity have come out with nested app authentication just uh, back in April, also known as NAA. This is basically a simple auth framework for add-ins, and it's currently in public preview. If you've worked with uh, Office add-ins SSO before, you might be familiar with the on behalf of flow that's currently out there. Uh, and if you have worked with it, you know it's, it's kind of complicated. So this is a much simpler dev experience than that. Uh, you only need to use the MCEL library, <clears throat> the Microsoft Authentication Library for support. There's no need for Office APIs. It also supports uh, single page application auth grants, which is very nice. So you don't need to go create a middle tier. You don't need to do the on behalf of flow token exchanges. You can access your token on the first call. This also offers a better user experience. Uh, so we have user, there's user consent flow built in. You don't need to pre-consent up front to all the scopes. Mobile platforms are supported. And I'll just clarify with that, like, in the public preview today, it's not supported, but it's coming soon. It's going to be out there. Um, and it also standardizes the authentication patterns for users across all the Microsoft apps. So you have the same experience no matter which app you're working on. Admins also really like this. It's a safer experience for them. Uh, you get granular identity and access to the Entry ID tokens. You get top tier identity protection heuristics and features. So if you want to configure MFA security policies, or if you want to do token monitoring, these are features that are not available in exchange tokens today. So you get a lot of improvements moving forward with this. So the roadmap to get from exchange tokens to NAA is since it's in public preview, we're, we would encourage you to go out, experiment, and plan with NAA. Uh, check your existing add-ins to see if they're using legacy tokens. If they are, you're going to want to update those to move them over to nested app authentication. Adopt nested app authentication by October 2024 for all your add-ins. And in terms of just look at this kind of the same view, but in terms of phases, phase one right now would be to look for calls to these particular endpoints. So in Office JS, there's these three APIs. If you see calls to this code, uh, it, or in your source code, 
then that means these are going to break in October. So if you're if it's make EWS request async, get user identity token async, get callback token async, then you need to change those to use this adapt authentication. Then in phase two, over the coming months, you want to build proof of concepts, commit dev resources for the updates. And before October, in phase three, make sure you've published those updates out to your customers. OK, so I'm going to show an NAA demo. So let me switch over, start with, I just want to show what the registration looks like uh, in Azure. So to make NAA work, you need to go create an app registration in Microsoft Azure. And I've created one here for the demo. It's got this name. I gave it Outlook NAA. I'll, I'll need this application client ID in my code. And the only thing you need to do to make this NAA is you add this redirect, this SPA redirect. This is the one that you have to have. It's the BRK dash multi hub, and you point it to your web server URL. And that will turn on NAA. And if you've worked with OBO, with the registration for that, you might know like you have to go expose an API, you create this access as user scope, you need to set up all these API permissions. None of that's necessary for an AA, so it's really this simple. You just set up this redirect. Now in the code, I have a code sample here that will basically go to Microsoft Graph and just get a list of file names for OneDrive and put them in the task pane. So the way you would add this to your project is make sure you import the MSAL browser library needs to be version 3.15 or later. And then in my task pane code, I'm going to import this function, create nestable public client application. It's a really long name. And then in my on ready, when I initialize my add-in, I'm going to go ahead and call that, create nestable public client application. I'm going to pass it the auth configuration with that client ID for my app registration, and then which authority I want. In this case, common says I want to, I'm a multi-tenant registration. Then I'm going to, when the user clicks on the run button, what's going to happen is we want to call Microsoft Graph. So I'm, I'll need a access token. So I create a token request, specify the scopes I want. So in this case, files read, user read, open ID and profile. This is kind of the cool part now is that you can actually, you, if you made another call, you could change these scopes and it'll actually support incremental consent with the user. So the first step here is I'm going to call this acquire token silent. Since we're SSO, ideally we should just get the token of the sign in user without any need to pop up a dialogue. If that works, we'll sign it to our access token variable. Now, if it doesn't work, like say the user hadn't consented 20 scopes yet, uh, in that case, we're going to need to call acquire token pop up. So that's the next step step. And if that works, we'll get the access token. If that failed, perhaps the user didn't consent, then we'll go ahead and just log the error. Otherwise, what we're going to do is make a fetch call to graph. So we call graph to Microsoft.com, rest endpoint. We're going to select the file names and just the top 10 list of those. And along with that, we pass this authorization header with our access token. Then we check for an OK response from graph. And if it is OK, we can dive into the JSON and parse through that to get all the item names out. And then we're going to go to an element on our task pane and just show those names to the user. So that's how it works. Now, unfortunately, I was going to run this and just show it real quickly working, but for whatever reason, my dev tenant expired yesterday. So I apologize. Um, while setting up the new one, it's not completely provisioned yet. So I, but I do have a link to this code uh, in the upcoming slides. So I'll show you that. Let's go back to the wrong button there. OK, so for more information about this, uh, go check out the public preview blog. That top link there has basically the same information I'm talking to you about today. If you know someone who needs this, send them that link. There's also some docs for getting started, which have the code that I was just showing. And there's also a frequently asked question list. And the Outlook sample link is here. If you want to go check that out, that's a great spot to see how NA works. Um, there's also, if you're working with Word, Excel, or PowerPoint, there's a sample for that as well. And then finally, last thing I'll say is just please stay engaged. It's a very short time frame, and uh, this is in public preview. So if you have questions or issues or bugs, go to our office JS repo on GitHub. There's a link to it here. Create an issue for us, put NA in the title because that will help us prioritize and find these. 
Um, and also watch the Microsoft 365 dev blog and community calls for updates going forward. We'll, we'll have more guidance that we're going to be sharing as we go forward, so you want to keep an eye on that. Um, so that's basically it. I hope this information was helpful, and thank you. Thank you.